have a large coffee, no milk, lots of sugar. Why is it that you run away any time somebody says something that you don't like? Um, because I have a... Do, do I really have to answer this? Yes. Yes, Reed. For me, you do. How could you be so heartless? What? Tell me how it's heartless to give Katie permission to go back to her house to pull her act together. Because Chris needs her there. He's very sick. He could be dying. No, Luke, he is dying. What he doesn't need is more stress. Thank you. <sighs> how is Katie being there going to cause him any more stress? Don't you think it's going to make him upset to see how Katie can't deal with his condition right now? Katie is a lot stronger than you think. Well, I hope you're right, but that doesn't mean that y y she has to prove it right now. There's only so much pain that a person should be asked to deal with. And this is your call to make? Mm -mm. No, it isn't. It's just a suggestion that I'm making based on what I know. I live with Katie. I see how she's still mourning for Brad. Her friend Nancy just passed away. She's only human. She's not an emotional superwoman. You know what I think? I'm guessing you're gonna tell me. I think you're projecting. Explain that, please. You're the one that can't handle emotional overload. And that's why you can't give your heart 100% to anything or, or to anyone. And you want everybody else to act the exact same way. Uh, okay, thank you, Dr. Freud. Freed, you just had Katie do exactly what it is that you always do. What is it that I always do? You run away when things get too sensitive. When things get messy, you turn your back. You run away from that mess. It's called a defense mechanism. It's what keeps me sane. You should try it sometime. Well, you know what, Reed? It might keep you sane, but it also keeps you from being able to love. Love? What, what, is, where did, what does that have to do with well, this? for you, apparently nothing. Oh, my God, I can't believe I just don't know that I'm in love with you. I, you know what? You're right. Maybe I just need a stronger defense mechanism. Hold the phone. Hold on, hold on. What? What did you say to Noah? Yes. I did tell Noah that I was in love with you. But honestly, right, right now, I'm not feeling much of that. That's because you're angry, and once again, you are overreacting. How come whenever I don't like something that you do, I'm overreacting? Mm, yes, I see a definite pattern. Reed, don't try to be cute. Because I am very angry at you right now. But you could tell me that you love me whenever you want. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe me if I said it right now anyway. You'd just think I was trying to diffuse your anger. Yeah. You're probably right. Try and see this Katie situation from my point of view. She has suffered beyond belief ever since Brad died. It's taken her a long time to get to this point with Chris. And now that she has, this happens. She needs to prep herself for this next big battle. Wait, Chris is the one lying in the hospital bed. We're talking one or two days. I mean, she just needs a little time. Yeah, but Reed, what if she doesn't have that time? What if Chris dies tonight and she's not there because she's too busy prepping herself for her next big battle? She'll have to live the rest of her life knowing that she wasn't there when he passed away. Did you ever think of that? I know that Katie wanted to be here for you. Thank you. What happened? Well... Honestly, she was really upset, and Reed sent her home to pull herself together. Yeah, of course she's upset. Lost her husband last year, lost a good friend yesterday. She shouldn't be forced to sit here and watch me withering away. Chris, you're not withering away. And you've got the best doctors on hand to make sure that that doesn't happen. I hope that's the case. I really, really do. But I'm not gonna make Katie suffer. Well, the docs are trying to figure out how to save my life. That's just, it's just not fair. Well, I think you've got the right to be selfish right now. It's selfish most of my life. I'm getting tired of it. You need all the support that you can get right now. And you need to be surrounded by all the people that love you. I am. I am, but Katie, no, it's... Look, I don't want this stupid virus to just destroy her life as well as mine. And deep down, she knows well 
And that's why she left. And I'm glad she did. Oh, wow, you have free time to sit around reading? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm just picking out all the facts here on his chart so I can start to make a few decisions. I didn't realize that Chris had uh, the luxury of time, Dr. Dixon. I'm sorry. I thought that your expertise was neurosurgery. It is. I also know when a patient needs his doctor to get it into gear. You know, you have a hell of a lot of nerve. You're the one who brought me in on this thing. Cardiology is your expertise. Yes, it is, and I came in blind on this thing. You didn't even tell me that it was Chris Hughes who was the patient. I had to do that. Yeah, well, then perhaps you will understand that I have to look at this and make get the facts straight so I can know what kind of treatment I'm going to launch into. Am I uh, interrupting, sir? No, no, not at all. Dr. Oliver just wanted to know what kind of treatment I was going to use on yeah. your son. I just think that time is of the essence. Yes, it is. John, I have complete trust in you. I know you'll do everything you can. I intend to. Excuse me. Are you questioning Dr. Dixon's capabilities? No, no, not at all. Oh, wait, uh, there's something I have to say. Yes? I know you have a healthy disrespect for authority and that you thumb your nose at protocol and you like to do things your own way. Agreed. And I have allowed that to happen to a point, even at times I've supported you when it really wasn't at my best interest. Your point? I've tried to be a friend, maybe even a mentor. I know that. It's meant a lot to me, and I, I appreciate that. I really do. So if it's okay... I don't think you do appreciate it, Doctor. Because if you did, you would have told me the minute you found out that my son was sick. But no, you chose to keep that a secret. Now he has a permanently damaged heart, and he may die. And I want to know why, from you, I wasn't told. He asked me to keep quiet about his condition. As the physician that was providing care, I had no choice but to honor his wishes. I see. I urged him to seek proper treatment. I also urged him to tell you all about it, Bob. He refused. And you called in John Dixon? Yes. That was the right thing to do. I know it was. It's what I would have done if I'd known. I know that you're angry and frustrated. I made the best decisions that I could, given the circumstances, and I don't apologize for them. If you're upset that you were the last to know, you really need to take that up with Chris. I think you are making a big mistake keeping Katie away, but I can tell it's useless arguing with you right now, isn't it? You're right, it is. Yeah, you've just decided to make everybody's lives really, really hard today, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I want to make something of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Luke, uh, I'd like a minute with my son. Oh, of course. I'll check on you later. Yeah, if I'm still around. Oh, you better be. It just dawned on me. You must be very happy. I beg your pardon? Well, you don't have any more competition. Chris is out of the running. I take no pleasure from your son's condition, Mrs. Hughes. No, no. I mean, you just, you know, it's the benefits of it. You have a straight shot to the chief of staff. If you're asking, do I want the chief of staff job? Yes. Do I want to get it because your son dies? Absolutely not. Oh. I am very sorry for him and for you and your family. I wish I could believe that. Kim. What? Stop. <laughs> Listen, Dr. Oliver is not to blame for what happened. I didn't say he was to blame. It's that he takes advantage of it. That's not true. Reed was the doctor who first took care of our son when he became ill. What? He wasn't allowed to tell us because Chris forced him not to. Doctor-patient confidentiality. He had to keep quiet. Is that true? Yes. And he's the one who called in John. It was all I could do to convince Chris to go along with that. What about the golf game with Leland? What about that? He went out there to watch over Chris. And then when he collapsed, he brought him to the hospital. I said, 
Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. I apologize. That's it's so completely unnecessary. I can only imagine what you must be going through. Oh, right now, I'm going through terror and anger and guilt. I'm the one with the tired old heart, and I should be in that bed, not our son. No, I'm the one. No, just stop it. We've got to stay strong. All of us, for Christopher's sake. And what if we... Shh. 